directions. So we have to start using anatomical directions. The back side is dorsal. The front side is ventral, from the Latin for stomach. Okay, ventral, dorsal, back. And the head, because the, you know, you have to think of us as a four-legged animal, this becomes dorsal and this becomes ventral. You've got medial down the middle and lateral to the edges. And then we have this extra term, rostral meaning towards the nose and caudal meaning towards the tail. So we've got dorsal side, ventral side, dorsal side, ventral side. You can see the, the right angle turn from the two-legged to four-legged axis. But you've got this nose end being rostral and the tail end being caudal. So rostral, caudal. And that takes the bend with it, rostral, caudal. Um, we also sometimes use superior and inferior and then anterior and posterior. I want you to make observations and drawings in your notebooks of what you see the whole sheep brain to look like. And I want you to identify what you can on the surface from the whole sheep brain. So you're, you're drawing and observing and figuring out what you can right now. I want you to look at them. Okay. What do you see? What do you find? What does it look like? No cutting. No cutting. I want you to draw. I want you to sketch what you see. This, this, um, this little u shapey thing? Right, the yep. little, yeah, it's almost like a little wishbone. Yep, yep. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's yep. the optic chiasm. What are these pieces on either side of this brain? Pardon? No, they're not basal ganglia, which is interior. What is this? I'm curious what you might think these are. Muscle going to the eye, exactly. If you look hard, this looks just like meat. It's full of fat and it's got muscle. So it's got striated muscle going to the eye. I didn't see it on any of the other specimens, but sometimes when you get it, it's there and the students see it and they say, ooh, what's this? But it's really interesting that you have to think about the fact that the eye is on the other side of the skull, so the skull's been taken off, so we lose the eyes in these dissections. Very, very few dissections do I ever see with the eye attached to the brain. But here in the sheep brain, you very often get muscles, eye muscles. And you can trace the, not only the optic nerve going into this bundle, but you can also trace other nerves. What other nerves might you anticipate would need to go to these eye muscles? Motor neurons that control the muscles of the eye and the eyelids. Exactly. Mo motor neurons to control the muscles of the eye. You know, your eyes go from left to right and up and down. Moving those eyes up and down and left and right and around in circles requires muscles. So there's six muscles around each eye to move it and to move your gaze in one direction or another. And that's, those eye muscles are controlled by axons of nerves that come straight out of the base of the brain. And we're gonna look for those nerves. Those are called cranial nerves. So, okay, I talked about, you know, I showed the one brain that had pieces of muscle coming off of the optic nerve because those were muscles going to the eye. What do you think this is? Muscle. Yeah, it's muscle. And you've got big nerves here. What else do you see? So you've got some interesting, here's a nerve on this one, and then this one has actually got some muscle around it. Kind of cool. There's the optic chiasm, oh, and the nerve okay. is missing on both sides. That's why I can't this is this is muscle around the trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth cranial nerve, and that goes to, that fifth cranial nerve goes to innervate the um, muscles of the head and neck. That's a gorgeous pituitary. Trigeminals, nice optic. What 
else do you see? Can you find any? Can you find your circle of willows or any of these blood vessels? Yeah, right here and right here, and it looks like it comes down like that and like this. And here, this is your basilar right here. There's not much blood in it, so it's hard to see. The way you can tell blood vessels is, especially, is you can kind of lift them, get underneath them and lift them up. So from here, it this is your this is your middle cerebral going laterally. Yep, exactly. Good. So it provides to all of the brain. All of this part. You're, and then that's where it comes. Yep. Out. This is the We're this is the superior sagittal sinus. That's the venous return. Good. So can you identify white matter and gray matter in your cerebellum? Um, yeah, the white matter would be in the middle again. And then the branching structures and the gray matter is on the surface. Yes, absolutely. So this is thalamus. This is hypothalamus. So it was right here was your pituitary coming in. And there's half of your optic chiasm. Um, this is another white matter tract called the fornix. This is the corpus callosum. This is the, the connections that go from the from left the side left right. and the right side. So these are all axons. There's, sometimes you can see that little, yeah, you can see it. You okay. see, this, see this tissue? Yep. See this yellow, darker colored tissue? Yeah. That's called the choroid plexus. Yeah, we found some And right that's here. what makes the cerebrospinal fluid. Right here. Pull off some of those meninges on the surface. You can actually then begin to scrape off some gray matter of the cortex and you can get down to the underlying white matter in the cortex as well. And I want you to scrape enough away that you can find the white matter fibers in the cortex and then you can peel some of those fibers away and trace where they go so that you can see how they go between one bump of cortex to the next. going to be the, um, the axons. Following up your brain stem into underneath the temporal lobe, and then you pull slightly forward that whole midbrain piece and you look up into what becomes the lateral ventricle in that temporal lobe and you see a curved structure right in the part of that temporal lobe that kind of curves like a C. So it's curving like a C because it's part of these bends and folds of the neural axis during development and that is the hippocampus. So if you put it back together and you look at the temporal lobe Deep inside the temporal lobe as if we were curving in this way. But when I move the brainstem out of the way and I look up into there, I can see the hippocampus. So you should all go looking for hippocampus. That's real important structure.